Two weeks after the balls went down, we have one little fish. Here we are checking out the balls on hookah from a sea urchin boat. Not much going on yet. Peace. The plankton just drifts along and using nature's own mechanisms, it turns into that. It's an amazing formula. Plankton is like pollen in the wind. It's everywhere and it drifts along and it just needs something to grow on. After about a year, we get the beginning of a full-fledged kelp ecosystem. The number of different fish and perch, as you can see, the current's going pretty good that day. Here we are a couple weeks later. That is a baby vermilion rockfish, what you call a Pacific red snapper. They get nice and big, about 10 pounds. And it's really important that there's reef structure off of the Santa Barbara area in the 40 to 50 foot zone to provide a jumping off spot for the small rockfish to go out to the deep water. There's a nice octopus in the reef ball hole. And a baby red cabazon just hanging out. Those are copper rockfish. We used to call them chucklehead when I was a kid, and a number of them have uh, found safe refuge here in the two reef balls that we put down. And there's the Danny Sea, which uh, is a local tugboat, which helped us out a great deal during the 19-month uh, pilot project. And here we are, 19 months into it. Finally got a clear day. You can see there's three or four species of rockfish. That's an olive rockfish or a Johnny Bass. Hey, Johnny, what's up, man? Bunch of perch, starfish kelp. The balls haven't sunk into the sand. They haven't moved. We counted 70 scallops, 7-0 on the two reef balls. That's incredible because on a full-size fish reef, that means we'll have thousands and thousands of scallops. That all They all clean the water because they're filter feeders. As you can see, the kelp is reaching almost to the surface now. There's a lot more vegetation on the seafloor inside the reef balls and around the reef balls. It seemed to have like a halo effect where it encouraged algae growth uh, for about three meters around each one of the reef balls. We're going up the kelp stock. You can see the small snails growing and that is a boccaccio or what we call a salmon grouper that doesn't look like a salmon or taste like one, but it is a recovering species. So we're happy to see that it used the kelp. Now this is directly off Goleta. It's a one mile long sewer outfall pipeline covered by 15,000 tons of quarry rock to protect it from storm surge. It's a nice, beautiful lingcod. These rocks were placed down there 15 years ago and they were not put there to be an artificial reef, but that sure is what happened. There's everything under the sun on the Galita pipeline, big rockfish, big keyhole limpets, a lot of lobster. There's even red abalone. I've seen three red abalone on it. And on the edges, there's a full fledged kelp forest that the white sea bass and the calico bass will use to come in and spawn. It's nice because it has what you call high vertical relief. It comes straight up off the bottom, which creates like an upwelling effect. So you get um, all the small plankton come in and the bigger fish come in to eat them. Now there's 80 artificial reefs in California made by the government, but there's a great number more like this, which are what you call uh, a happy coincidence, which are underwater objects that were put there for another purpose, but they end up harboring huge amounts of marine life, such as breakwaters, jetties, pipelines. Those are all 
functioning viable reefs. It's a lobster and a keyhole limpet. Another rockfish. Now this is Rincon Island. It's that big fake island you see just below Rincon. It was built in 1958 as an oil derrick. It's operated by Greca Oil and the oil pipes go 19,000 feet straight down through the substrate underneath that to pump oil up. But as you can see, the large quarry rocks that it's made out of have created a very viable artificial reef full of kelp. And there's a Garibaldi, our state fish. Those are Gargonians, a type of soft coral. And all around there is just mud. The water is dirty and it's just mud, mud, mud for miles. And you put this there and you have an oasis of life. Here we are rounding the corner going out to sea. You can see there's a nice little school of what you call senorita fish there. Now let's move on to the Camp Pendleton Reef. This is a diagram of the Camp Pendleton Artificial Reef. And uh, if you listen very carefully, Frederic is going to tell you a little bit about it. He has a slight accent, so listen carefully. We are right now at 3320 North and 117.33 West. Uh, it was made in 1980. 1990 or 1980? 1980. 1980. Uh, it's uh, 3.5 acres. Uh, it's a pilot experimental reef of the developmental reef series. Uh, 10,000 ton of quarry rocks. And how many? Here we are at the very tippy top of one of the piles of quarry rock. It uh, maxes out in about 25 feet of water and terminates in about 43. As you can see, it is absolutely stuffed with a life. There's big bull calico bass. They're, those small fish are what you call blacksmith. They're an indicator species. They're, they're always in the places where upwelling occurs and the current is just right for large pelagic fish like yellowtail and white sea bass. And of course, the orange fish you see in front of you is the Garibaldi, named for Italian fishermen out of San Pedro in the early 20th century. There's a baby female sheephead and a very lucky lobster. The season just ended two days ago. Now, if you listen to the crackling, that is the sound of life. That is shrimp rubbing their mandibles. Uh, it's like these calico bass eating sea urchins and sheephead eating sea urchins and lobsters eating and, and all the different sounds. So let's listen to the crackling as an indicator of how healthy the reef is. Now this is a cobblestone pathway placed between quarry rock piles. The piles are about 60 feet apart. And the what you call low relief structure allows kelp to grow on it. And when you have high relief where it comes up off the bottom like this, you don't have any kelp, but you have more fish and more gargonians. Um, and it's, it's a combination between the two that makes a healthy reef ecosystem. There's another nice calico. Now, this reef has been fished heavily, almost daily. Oh, there's a nice halibut. See, he was injured and he went to the reef to seek refuge. It's been fished almost daily for 34 years. Oh, who's that? That's a subsistence breath hold freediver. He's out here fishing for dinner. And I talked to this guy after and he feels that it's important to get your food outside the corporate system. And that's one reason why it's important to have reefs of this nature to ensure that people in society can access marine protein outside the corporate system. There's a rubber tire that we'd like to remove. Somebody dumped it over the side. So the reef has withstood fishing pressure and still has robust amounts of fish life after all these years.
So that's a wrap on the Camp Pendleton reef here uh, for our, our reef survey. As you can see, there was a couple of rubber tires down there. You get to remove those. The uh, reef was absolutely full of life, and the halibut was a, was a bonus. It's sculpin, gargonians, everything you ever wanted down there. As you can see, between the reefs, there was a uh, kelp on the flat rocks that connected the reef. And I think the most important thing to note is the small cobblestone connecting the reefs. Uh, there were a lot more smaller fish using the corridors between the reefs and avoiding predation between it as a way to uh, move between the reefs um, without getting eaten for the most part. So exciting things to come. This is the barn. Uh, the barn. Uh, we are about halfway between Dana Point and Oceanside in front of Camp Pendleton. Uh, Now here we are in the barn kelp, uh, just about a mile and a half away from the Pendleton Artificial Reef. And as you can see, the bottom is much flatter and there's a lot less going on. If you listen carefully, listen for the crackling. There's a lot less crackling. There's still some fish here, but they're smaller uh, and there's no big schools of fish. And it's like magic when, it, when you have low relief structure like this, you have a lot of kelp, but just not much fish. You need high relief and big caves to have fish. And the Fish Reef Project provides that. The reef balls are the perfect combination between high relief and low relief. You get kelp and fish with reef balls. In the holes here, you don't see much. I didn't see one lobster, not one keyhole limpet. Just a couple of little tiny sea urchins, that's it. Now there's gonna be eight billion people on this planet soon, and us humans have to get busy coming up with solutions. Man-made reefs are one of the most effective, low-cost, fast-acting ways to offset human impact. We can actually increase our marine resources dramatically while maintaining access to fisheries, providing ecotourism opportunity, study opportunities, and we can actually leave a dividend. We can provide more than we take. And we use nature's own mechanisms by doing it. Now here's a high relief piece of structure. As soon as you get a nice rock, you get gorgonians, you get sea urchins, you get a few more fish. So I welcome everybody to join us at the Fish Reef Project because there has not been a state-sponsored reef making project in California for 25 years. We're all that there is. Every other seaside state in the union makes hundreds or even thousands of reefs. So California needs to get busy and I welcome you to join us. This is deployment up in Whittier, Alaska in Prince William Sound of a reef ball reef. Here's a blueprint of the first Two acre reef ball reef we'd like to make off Santa Barbara, about 1200 reef balls. And based on what you've seen in this video, it's realistic to expect that this is what it will look like after two years underwater. Here's the nutty, crazy, wacky reef ball team. We like to have a good time. And reef balls work very well in a tropical environment. We also have a project going in Maui for coral restoration. There's over 500,000 reef balls in 70 countries. So stay tuned for good things to come from the Fish Reef Project.